It's setting trends to inspire others to compete with the crowded modern gaming industry. Welcome to my new video. In association with Nikos Media LLC, YouTube's live service is proud to announce the release of Season 6. Finally got that bug at the end of the last video taken care of. Wait, where were we? Oh, right. Roll the intro. Lethal Company and Palworld shocked the world by not just being solid games from small developers, but also by outselling and putting their billion dollar backed competition to shame. But these two games alone didn't bring enough competition to topple the live service models and hostile business practices that we've become all too comfortable with. Perhaps this trend of small developer success stories was coming to an end, and these two games were just sweet, temporary distractions. It seemed as if the dreadful state of the multiplayer gaming industry was here to stay. Okay, the jig is up. You saw the thumbnail and title already. Roll the clip. This is Helldivers 1 a top-down shooter released in 2015. It was released as some positive fanfare as well as a bit of a cult following, but it remained within smaller circles of players. I never heard of it, and odds are, you never heard of it either. A sequel was announced in late 2020, and quietly, developers at Arrowhead Game Studios built a new experience, taking the game from a top-down perspective to third person. With that, America Simulator was born. Become Manage democracy throughout the galaxy. Become a hero. Become a legend. Helldivers 2 is a Sony published co op PvE shooter released in February 2024, mere months after Palworld and Lethal Company shocked widespread audiences, and somehow, defying all odds. The game rapidly took over social media and much of gaming discourse. It far exceeded sales expectations from Arrowhead and Sony, climbing high into the Steam player charts and becoming ultra successful on PlayStation. But what's amazing about this game's success is the severe lack of advertising behind Helldivers 2's release. It somehow defied a lack of advertising and snowballed into a game so huge that the developers were forced to implement a player cap on the servers and put waiting players into a queue for its first weeks. Just like the Great Depression. So how in the love of freedom did this game put the rest of the AAA gaming industry to shame? With next to no- Hoopla! Helldivers 2 at its core is pure fun. Alongside your fellow Helldivers, you drop in with heavy weapons and the full power of your Super Destroyer into the Galactic Front. A Helldiver's mission is to spread democracy from the Federation's capital planet, Super Earth. Two hostile factions are vying for control of the galaxy. The Bugs, or Terminids, and Communist Robots. These battles take place on a constantly evolving live galaxy map. The enemy factions grow and spread in power as Helldivers attempt to liberate worlds, making every battle feel important in the grand scheme of this massive intergalactic war. And speaking of war, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available now for free on PC and consoles. Get behind the wheel of over 2,500 tanks, warships, planes, and helicopters that are all fully customizable and hail from 10 major nations. War Thunder boasts over 70 million players joining in on large-scale PvP battles. There's a timeline of vehicles to choose from in War Thunder, between 1920s biplanes and armored cars, all the way up to modern battle tanks and fighter jets. As as someone who has played War Thunder extensively, I can say I appreciate the historical accuracy displayed in-game. With shots you land on enemy players, you'll get to watch an x-ray view showing the damage your shells wrecked on the interiors of enemy vehicles. It's legitimately awesome. Until you get hit in the ammo rack. Use the link in the description or pinned comment to gain access to multiple premium vehicles, an exclusive Eagle of Valor vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of premium account free. This limited time offer is available for both new and returning players who haven't played for at least 6 months. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Helldivers 2 missions offer multiple objectives, where upon main objective completion, you can extract at any time through the use of your ultimate wingman and designated driver, Pelican 1. These extraction sequences can be pretty tense as well. Immediately, this game shines through its combat. 
Battles go from contained to out of control hellish nightmares in an instant, especially on harder difficulties, which makes accomplishing these objectives increasingly difficult. One thing this game does perfectly is the gun design. Each firearm sounds and feels beefy. And combined with the toggleable first person aim down sight feature, firefights can become very immersive. Seriously, I would kill to have a full on FPS view as a setting in this game. It'd be awesome. Both factions offer something fun to shoot at. The bugs slowly swarm you with herd tactics, coupled with some very powerful units that require quite a bit of teamwork to pick off in dire situations. The automatons shoot back, but behave like, well, dumb robots, and attempt to suppress you with overwhelming, totally inaccurate fire. At the height of this game's difficulty, it can be very, very hard. But still, most of the time, the AI enemies are pretty fair. Well, most of the time. There's no skill-based matchmaking here. The difficulty selection is entirely up to you, not up to an algorithm pushing unwinnable matches onto you. It gives you near total control, unlike the other mainstream modern multiplayer multi-sequel monetized shooter slop that we've seen in recent years. Though this may be in part because it's a PvE game where players work together to eliminate AI enemies, but I digress, this game feels fun and challenging. This all in turn makes Helldivers all the more fun and rewarding to play, especially because more progression points or medals are awarded for taking on higher difficulties. I love it. A game that actually rewards skill. Why was this formula lost long ago? The most notable thing about Helldivers 2 for me is that it somehow made the dreaded quick time event fun. Yeah, quick time events, or QTEs, are perhaps one of the lamest features from modern video games. These QTEs bring normal gameplay to a screeching halt, cutting off gameplay with an on-screen button prompt that requires a single push of a button to accomplish. Be, be careful. Wow, this is fun, isn't it? And Helldivers 2, calling in airstrikes, support weapons, and even respawning your own squad mates requires directional key spamming. So in short, every busy task turns into Dance Dance Revolution. Calling in a sentry gun, activating an artillery cannon, and even glassing the planet has you speeding through quick time arrow puzzles. Often, you'll be forced to perform these puzzles while in the heat of battle, which can be engaging and stressful at the same time. Speaking of puzzles, most objectives in this game require multi-step puzzles. These challenges are awesome, and they're not too confusing or complex. They add an extra layer to the gameplay and keep it fresh. Many involve these same arrow puzzles, combined with other tasks that must be completed on terminals and across the world. One example is the oil refinery objective, where to start the refinery's oil flow, you must first enter an arrow puzzle into the terminal, followed by unscrambling a pipe puzzle on that same computer, and then you must manually unblock valves with explosives before turning them before finally going back to the terminal to get the flow working again. Other objectives involve more straightforward solutions, such as bombing a defunct research station, destroying a robot base or bug hive, or even just activating an artillery emplacement and loading it with shells. And speaking of the artillery objective, you can actually use the gun to rain fire on enemies for the rest of the mission, and each shell type you loaded into the gun determines what ordnance will be fired next, so try to remember what order you loaded the smoke shells and the high explosive shells in. It's awesome that a single artillery objective doubles as an extra support option, it's not just a bait and switch. And it's not just the artillery that changes the mission, you can find radar dish installations throughout the map as well, and if you solve the radar dish objective, you get greater map visibility and can see points of interest around the map all light up. Again, calling in these artillery fire missions, as well as solving any of the objectives in this game, happens under quite significant pressure at times, and forces your team to work together and cleverly use your support options to survive. That, alongside dolphin diving to save your skin. Perhaps the most patriotic mission in the game is where you get to launch a nuke at freedom-hating aliens. How American. So, 
The game is fun and pretty innovative, but why is this game a step up from the AAA competition and how is it managing to keep a stable player count? The Battle Pass. We can thank Fortnite for bringing us the most lame, boring, and predatory progression system in recent memory. There was a time that each of these franchises had flexible progression systems. Skill once brought greater rewards, and if you were lucky, a game even had a non-linear progression system, where you earned currency or points, and you could spend these points on items you wanted while avoiding ones you didn't like. Helldivers 2 has a battle pass too. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. This one is how battle passes should be. It's partially non-linear, providing multiple unlockable options for players to choose from. Further, like I mentioned earlier, more medals are awarded for harder difficulties, which obviously rewards skilled players. It is actually a great system, and you can unlock quite a bit from this battle pass pretty fast. Then, there's the microtransaction store. Before you unsubscribe and try to cancel me, this one's actually how it should be as well. Everything is cheap in the store, requiring these super space bucks, which can be found for free in the battle pass, and you can even find them in-game. Oh, do you, want, do you want the super credits over here? There's some... I found them, look. I found some super credits. Nice. These can be found physically stored in vaults, storage containers, and ammo caches throughout the mission, incentivizing exploration, and allowing you to unlimitedly earn the premium, purchasable currency in-game. It's genius, and sometimes all you need is a grenade to blow open the container, or a partner to open a vault with you. It, it's just fun. This game's just fun. Even earning the premium currency feels good. Like, come on. Who could have thunked it? Sure, you could buy cosmetics and all that in the store with real money to get it now, or you could enjoy the game and stock up that currency for free. Alongside this are the callable support options that use earned requisition points that you could spend in a non-linear fashion. So if you want to unlock maybe like the hunter cluster bomb strike, you can. If you want the auto cannon, you can choose that, and you can avoid things that you're just not interested in. This game's progression is almost entirely in the hands of the players. It's genuinely rewarding and harkens back to games that we played when we were younger that offered equal levels of freedom. And this is obviously a stark contrast to the game's competitors, which constantly pressure you to buy things to actually progress by throwing garbage free rewards at you and advertising pricey cosmetics. Also, I want to mention that the Superstore has reviews on the items, and um, I mean, they're definitely fake, but I, I just want to appreciate the one star reviews that are redacted for treason. <laughs> nice. The automatons, heartless killing machines. It is an undeniable fact that they do not have hearts. And heart is what Super Earth is all about. Prove your humanity. Show you care. Enlist in the Super Earth Armed Forces and destroy the automaton threat. Helldivers is an addictive experience with friends and has top-notch gameplay. But this is where Helldivers 2 brings it all together. The sweet screensaver imagery, alongside the fun universe behind Super Earth's Way war. Of life. Oh, hello. But freedom doesn't come free. No! Sweet liberty! No! <laughs> Look familiar? Scenes like these are happening all over the galaxy right now. Helldivers is a very aesthetically pleasing game. Arrowhead switch and camera angle in Helldivers 1 to Helldivers 2 is performed nearly flawlessly, and is very likely one of the biggest reasons behind the sequel outperforming the first game so well. It has a surprising amount of graphic fidelity for the budget and size of the studio behind it. And as for the universe, it has opened the door for limitless meme potential. There are obvious references to action movies from the 80s and 90s, 
The film influences seem to hard carry this universe, which helped this game feel like a movie. There are countless movie moments, like being chased by overwhelming hordes of bugs as the film-esque music swells in intensity, or sneaking by robots for stealthy infiltration as the ambient strings meander suspensefully. This cleverly builds onto the tension and fun in this game's design. Further, the film influences in Helldivers provide an extra layer of nostalgia as it harkens back to nostalgic franchises. The automatons reflect sci-fi robot armies, similar to what is seen in Terminator. And as for Starship Troopers, we have the Space Bugs, alongside a borderline fascist space empire of humankind. The amount of Starship Trooper meme spam around this game is insane. Further, this game's themes are beginning to blur into reality. The elite Helldivers drop onto worlds that are invaded by enemies. Enemies that lead a way of life seen as undemocratic by Super Earth. Terminates. Unthinking monstrosities who want nothing more than to kill and eat every last human. And every last human includes your family. Don't let your family get eaten. The human soldiers bring forth levels of firepower that'll make America jealous but also call back to the extensive error campaigns demonstrated by real-world militaries. Super Earth's propaganda emphasizes the necessity of self-sacrifice for the good of the human race. Although it is labeled as a democracy, and the Empire constantly worships liberty in ways that'll once again make America jealous, Super Earth is a guided democracy, which is more like a democratic authoritarian dictatorship of sorts. Well, that's not surprising. Also, I'm pretty sure child labor is legal in this world. The automatons should have been content with what they had. Now they're going to find out just how hard every man, woman, and child over seven will work to stop them. This same obsession for democracy alongside overwhelming firepower has been parroted ad nauseum by the fanbase. How about a nice cup of liver tea? How'd you like the taste of freedom? How about a nice cup of liver tea? Everyone in this community has assumed the role of a Helldiver, to the point where some battles fought throughout the constantly evolving galactic war map mean more to Helldivers than their own children. Space Vietnam The most bitter and challenging planet in the game, Malevolon Creek, hung in the balance between Earth and the automatons in a brutal battle. But despite the Helldivers' best efforts, alongside the blood and oil spilled of countless souls, the planet was lost. The community was devastated. Earlier I mentioned the lack of advertising behind this game. As you can see, the community practically advertised this game for Arrowhead and Sony. Twitter timelines, YouTube feeds, and more were flooded with praise and propaganda from Helldivers worldwide. The game had sold itself and snowballed, picking up more Super Earth citizens before converting them to Helldivers to promote the game further. Millions of dollars in free advertisement had carried this game into a runaway viral success similar to Palworld and Lethal Company that came out just a few months earlier. It is beginning to seem apparent that online communities are turning more and more to indie games as well as alternative games from more AA studios such as Helldivers here, ditching modern gaming depression and embracing a wholesome good time. This is a very welcome and positive change, I gotta say. This is how these games killed modern gaming's misery. All this was carried by militant fans praising the use of napalm on non-combatants. 
or something like that, I don't know. And people wouldn't have jumped on Helldivers 2 en masse if it weren't for how good this game actually is. The engaging quick time event puzzles under pressure, intense difficulties and shoot 'em up situations, movie-like moments, tight action and lenient progression system, all tied up in a sci-fi fascist bow that's fun for the whole family. This game is just awesome. Helldivers 2 exploded in popularity amidst the success of Palworld and Lethal Company. As AAA franchises we grew up with fade in popularity and quality due to taking the control from their consumers, Helldivers, Palworld, Lethal Company, and more are stepping up to return control to their players. With how many viral alternative games are popping off in such a short span of time, it seems that Helldivers 2 is possibly marking a trend of a positive shift in this modern gaming industry. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Again, you can play War Thunder for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation now by using my link in the description and pinned in the comments below. Don't forget that new players as well as returning ones who haven't been online for at least 6 months can snag these premium vehicles, in-game currency, and other bonuses for a limited time. So be sure to act fast if you want to hit the fields, seas, and skies with a head start. Also, you get the M4 Sherman, which is the best tank in World War II. Come at me. Thanks for watching. Check out some other indie games as well and broaden your horizons. You might just end up happier than you were before.